Hey everyone, this is Ryan. In today's video, we're going to take a look at adding column headers to our gallery. We'll look at three different ways uh, you can add column headers and the aesthetics around them, and perhaps one of these options will work for you. So let's take a look at the first one, which is probably the most basic way to add column headers. Um, if you take a look at the screen here, what we have are labels across the top. We do have some you know, icons for sorting, there's a refresh icon, but essentially what makes this a header is the labels on the top and also having the line break here as well. So using this line break is actually a rectangle. So if you look at the right side here, this is where you'll see I have a rectangle that's sized one pixel in height, and then it's very wide. So it's as wide as the, the gallery here. Um, so that's essentially the, the break for the header. Um, so it's obvious to the user that these are the, this is the header section for your gallery. Um, so one thing I wanna show is just how to add that, um, that line break here. So what we're gonna do is just delete it and I'll go and what we will do is we'll add a new rectangle here. And one thing you have to keep in mind is you never add to your gallery because your header should always reside outside of the gallery. Otherwise it will repeat underneath. So you'll see that once you add it here, how that rectangle is repeated. So what we want to do is add it above the gallery. And then from here is where you essentially will resize it. So you could just drag it, bring it along here. And then from here, you can actually change around the height and everything like that. So we'll switch it to one pixel in height. So if we take a look, we see that, but it's still not lined up correctly. So we can change that around. So in this case, we'll switch it to our previous coordinates here. So 117 by 142, and we'll change the width to two, uh, 1220. So this is what we had previously, and we just recreated it. And the one thing that you can do is change around the, the color as well. Um, so here we could change it to black, for example. So it'll match our footer down here. But as you can see, this is a very simple header. That's uh, very easy to put together. The labels that I have here, I use semi-bold. Um, you know, that's probably the nice, nice amount of font weight you would want here. And uh, the icons are very obvious. They're sized well enough, um, usually about 20 by 20 pixels or 25 by 25. That's usually a good size for them as well. Now, the next option that we have uh, for a, a header um, is having a rectangle as a backdrop here. So you'll see the rectangle here, um, similar to the previous screen. Uh, the only difference is, is the labels are always going to be in front of the rectangle and you want either a light backdrop and dark um, color for your your labels here or you want a dark backdrop and using like white for your your font color here and that's what I've done here so it's pretty simple it's a rectangle uh, backdrop and I put the height of 40 width 12 20 and um, you'll see the X and Y are similar to the previous um, uh, screen that we had now, one thing that I've done here, though, that's a little bit different is I changed the height of my labels to the same height as the backdrop. And the reason why I did this is it's to ensure that it's always in the middle of that backdrop. So it's nice and centered there. And one thing um, I want to mention as well, if you're putting together your headers, sometimes it's ideal when using currencies is to right align your, your headers here just because um, you know, with smaller numbers uh, to larger numbers, if you're dealing with like millions to like a, a dollar something, it's easier to read it from you know, right to left um, uh, as opposed to left to right. That's one thing I've seen in uh, financial services. It's just easier to read that way. So it's better just to write, write align all your, your, um, your headers for anything that's currency related. Now, let's go to option number three, which is a little bit different, and this is my preferred method for any um, headers, is actually using, um, instead of a rectangle, 
I'm actually only using labels. So, and the reason why I'm using labels here, if we go and click on one of them, you will see that the label here, um, we are using a fill at the back uh, as, as the background. So if I click here, you see that this is the fill that we have. And if I click the drop down, we see that we have the fill property. So by default, this is always white or transparent in the background. And this is where you can change it to whatever color you want. And this, you can see how it's, it's nicely aligned here. Um, it's, it's very evenly aligned. We do have a space between each of the columns. So that's a good way to break your columns up as opposed to the other method, methods I showed you. And the way I did that was by, if I go to this field here, all I did was I, I simply went to the X property of this um, column header. And I looked at the previous column header, found its you know, X position, added the width of the previous column, and I just added one. And I did that for each so it can nicely order it. And if I happen to, for example, change this, um, this uh, you know, first column here from let's say 117 to 100, you will see that everything shifts over automatically. So it's also a nice way to easily manipulate your um, column header if needed. So one thing I wanna show is just how your labels will look like by default. So if I click and drag and drop a label here, you'll see how I have a default um, transparent or, or white backdrop here. And this is where you can change around the color. So you'll see that color here and then just switching it to semi-bold. Um, and that will, you know, make it look much more nice and uh, obvious to the user that that's your header for your gallery. So those are the three options that um, you can use for adding headers to your gallery and hopefully uh, one of those works for you.